In every single functional programming video, you're gonna see that it says, in functional programming, we treat functions as a first class citizens. To the point, absolutely 100% accurate, but sometimes these phrases get so much popular that you start wondering what it actually means. Can somebody tell me in a plain, simple language? Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna explain you what functional programming is. And I promise you, after watching this video, it's gonna be absolutely simple and absolutely breeze to understand what functional programming is. Now, before we move on to understand the functional programming, I got a question for you. As of now, currently, in whatever the programming language you are writing your code, let me know in the comment section, are you using procedural way of writing programs or you're using object-oriented way or you're already using functional programming? Now, the thing is that functional programming is absolutely amazing and it's mostly independent of programming language, but support of functional programming is now very gentle in some of the programming language only. Some are supporting them, some are releasing updates to support it, and eventually in future, many more programming language will come up and will support functional programming. Functional programming, it's not a new jargon. It just is a way, a style of writing programming and treating some values and some function in a bit different way than we used to treat them in object-oriented programming. Now, definitely there are a variety of definitions and every single programmer can debate in the world of functional programming whether this is functional or this is not. But there are three core important things on which every single programmer is gonna agree that yes, these are the part of functional programming. And I can explain you them in a much easier way on a code editor. So let's move there. So there are four core important things that you absolutely need to know. The first one is that functional programming is moreover of writing style of code. So it's majorly independent of programming language, but there are some programming language which is supporting it to its, at its best, some are not. So there are a couple of concepts that you need to understand. Let me expand this. Uh, this is just simply a VS code and I'm not gonna be running any code. I'm gonna just explain these syntax using the help of code. So let's just say uh, we got a score and you are playing on to some great level. You got a score of 456. Now on that, let's just say you have a function. Again, this is not really a core function. It's just the gist of how function usually looks like. So we're gonna simply say that uh, at this exact stage, you have done something so that we want to add a bonus up here. What you can do up here, you can simply uh, call this up here, simply say score is gonna be equals to uh, score uh, plus, and you just add some number like 45. And finally, you just go ahead and return score. Now don't yell at me by saying, hey, you should say this dot score. It's moreover about understanding the concept, not exactly pinpointing the stuff. So this is all okay, but this is not really much of an acceptable thing in functional programming. In functional programming, you're gonna notice that these things don't happen. Moreover, a functional, if I write this into a functional programming way, I would write it in a bit different manner. I would write the same function like this, and I'm gonna simply say that, hey, this is my function. Again, add bonus. And this is gonna take a parameter score. And what we're gonna do now here, we are gonna simply just hit uh, return and we're gonna simply say uh, whatever the bonus or whatever the score we have got, we just want to add, uh, let's just say 45 on to add. Now, there's a huge difference between this piece of code and this piece of code. No, it's not much shorter. You can also make it as shorter like this, but that's not the point. In the functional programming, we keep our functions and data totally separate. So that's the step number one, or kind of a unspoken rule in the functional way so that keep your data and keep your functional totally separate. While debugging, this piece of code is much easier to debug because it is not uh, referring to any global variable which might be causing the issue. This is moreover like self intake function which just runs on its own. And it's also not much very dependent on what kind of data you're passing, whether it's a score or maybe it's a live, whatever it is, it's just gonna add 45 to it. So that's the basic gist of it. So that's the one thing, keep your data and keep your functions totally separate. So that's one thing. Now again, one another thing is actually state change. So this state change is, if I can write that, this state change is a very interesting thing. And it's a bit difficult to understand for beginners, but I'm gonna try my best. These examples will just uh, simplify like ridiculous level. So it says that uh, you should not change the state much often as much as you can avoid it, just do it. For example, I am Hitesh and I say, uh, let's just say, hey, a lot, uh, which is 
true. And then later on, I realized that this variable should not say hey, it should say uh, something like hey there. And then I realized the same variable should say something like this, uh, hey there, and then everyone. So there is nothing wrong in this style of code. We are just having a variable and this variable is getting updated all the time. Now keeping the track of this state is actually a bit tricky to understand this one. So in functional programming style, we actually don't uh, reuse this variable much often. We don't change it much often. In fact, what we do is, uh, let's just say Hitesh says, uh, hey, and then we want to update this somehow. So we're gonna say Hitesh on Wednesday says, uh, hey there, uh, if I can write it, hey there. And Hitesh on Saturday says, uh, hey there, again, come on, hey there, everyone. So this is more over like a functional style. You don't update the same variable. In fact, it is okay to redeclare or kind of a newly declare again a variable uh, with some more modifications so that it's much more clear and it's okay for us. So this uh, thing is pretty common of the don't change your state and mutability, mutability. This is common thing in the functional programming. Again, the rule of a thumb is that make sure you don't really update the same variable again and again, you instead declare more of them. Now coming up onto the last part, which is very funny and uh, pretty interesting as well. So in this, what they say is uh, something like this, function or functions are treated as a first class. Okay, uh, this is a bit of a bit difficult statement to understand for beginners, but I'm gonna make it absolutely ridiculously simple. So let's just say we have a const with h and it is storing 45. I don't know why I'm always using 45, but that's it. And we also have got a variable which is name. In your language, however you define it, that's okay. And if I just say this variable is Hitesh, that's okay. But what functional programming says that the way you are treating your numbers and string and you are throwing them around anywhere, like you can declare them in a variable, you can pass them in a function, you can return them in a function, the same kind of treatment should be given to the functions as well. So we can simply say const add a score, something like that add score and that can also be a simple function whatever you want to do inside that that should be the case i want to i want to say this so this is how the function should look like in a functional programming it can be it should be able to store functions into any variable and not only that if let's just say you have a method which says say hello and this is our method. In here also, you should be able to accept function as a parameter. So I can simply say function and then simply say like this, whatever you want to say, or maybe a reference would be a better example, but this actually makes things simple and easy. And here also you can come up and simply say, hey, return, and then we can say function and like this, dot, 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 da, da. So this is it, we can store the function into a variable, we can pass it as a parameter, we can return it as whatever the data type it is. So this is the gist of uh, functional programming. So these are the three important thing. Now the fourth and the most important thing, and the fourth most important thing is, you need to hit that subscribe button so that I can keep on coming up with these amazing video and you can get notification for all of them. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that like button too on this video. And that's it for this one. I'm gonna catch you up in the next one. <laughs>